So, I put up a vlog last night and I'm so ashamed, there is like an audio mess and there's definite like issues between the two cameras and the idea I had just bombed, like totally bombed. But I think, you know, I think the lesson there is that it's okay to fail and learn from that fail and then try and fix it. So, something that I'm trying to do today is film in daylight because I think it's the best light, I think you get the best color, everything and so I definitely think that it should improve the, my video. I'm not going to use the dual cameras, I must say that G7X, it's got two major problems for me and one, it doesn't shoot um, at the right resolution, which I don't know if I'm just missing something, but it should be at like 1920 or 1080, and it's not, I always have to scale the videos up. And then the other thing is that there's this endless clicking, and I think I've mentioned it before in, in some of my other um, posts, but yeah, there's like endless clicking as it tries to autofocus. And uh, truthfully, I don't know enough about photography to actually go and set this camera up right in the right conditions. And I think once you're moving anyway, I think that you're going to have issues with um, with the lens. So, um, I must say, what was a plastic? Let's let's be positive. Here. The plus is that um, the ability to have light during uh, low light situations was really great compared to the iPhone. So it's a definite plus. But that endless clicking, like I couldn't just use that camera now because I'm gonna have to have separate audio and there's no audio jack inside the, the G7X. So um, it's a bit of a, a loss there, but it's fine. So now what I'm trying to do is record on, on my iPhone. Put my mic, which I keep forgetting to use when, when I, especially when I record at home. Um, so put the mic on. Hopefully the audio is better. Hopefully the light's better because of the natural light. I have this huge window in front of me here, and uh, that'll definitely help my videos. Um, and yeah, I'll try and get these things in. I'm going to try and even make us a routine that I maybe start my day with a vlog instead of ending my day with a vlog and I think it then gives me if I shoot it in the morning and I've prepared because this is another thing that I'm not doing and I think you can hear it when I talk even now I do too much thinking as I'm speaking and and so because I'm still trying to figure things out I tend to do what I'm doing exactly right now is like have these moments of pause I tend to go, um, and you know, I, I used you know a lot. I actually think I should start putting a you know count inside my videos. And I'm not kind of too big to go, hey, I've made some mistakes and, and I immediately apologize today. I did like an audio thing that I only realized like eight minutes in, suddenly the audio just spiked up so that background noise, suddenly you couldn't hear my talking, but my video was up and my goal at the moment is to get my videos um, up as frequently as possible. Like I'm trying for every day. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sustain it. It's a lot more work than people think. So credit to these guys who do this uh, for a living. I don't. But I have a bit of time in my hands. So while I've got this time in my hands, I'm going to use it to experiment with vlogging and, and figure out like my best way of uh, getting a quality video out. But yeah, definitely need better light. Um, gonna stop using filters if I can. Uh, gonna use the microphone a lot more so I've got a much clearer video. And then I need to prepare. So yeah. I'm gonna prepare a little and we will continue.
Educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Great quote from uh, Aristotle. So, how's that for a thought for the day? grab some breakfast and uh, I will tell you what I'm going to talk about today. So anyone who's worked in my design team would know that I have a set of rules. Um, I think kind of some people have named them Craigslist and uh, you know we joke about it but they're really a set of rules that I just feel kind of are offensive um, as a designer and, and quite lazy. And, uh, you know, we have put these rules inside um, our design system and the team did like make fun of it and they did like add to it and the whole thing. But generally speaking, there were a list of rules that were just say hey don't do these things and now in any set of rules of course there's exceptions like i'm the first to admit that just sometimes the only thing that's going to work or the budget or the timing or the skills available or whatever are forcing us into something and that happens that's just a reality of what we do within this industry but for the most part i think that you could work smarter and better and the whole thing and that's why there were these rules. One of the kind of big things on uh, my list of, of things that I don't believe that people should do are modals. They're one of my pet hates. That ride over there is a modal. Mostly they're like disruptive, uh, invasive, confusing. They are like used way too often. It's a very lazy practice, very bad for accessibility. They used like an interaction like jump draw. They're hard to escape because they're like in your face. They're like a frustrating user experience. Uh, on small screens. I mean, you've all seen them on mobile. So there are other patterns that you could use. So instead of what you see over here, where you've got this thing that pops up in the front, you could get rid of this. And instead of a modal, you could have your content there and then just fill in this area here with the same information and a call to action button without it being over the um, content that's underneath there. You could go and have some content and then where you need that modal, it can then populate Between there and you can actually then put the modal content in there you can have your content then where you need a modal 
this content then the modal sits down here in the page the modal information of the button and then when you go from here and you need the modal this page could slide up and then you do your stuff on the modal content in there, and then you click it and then underneath here you can then have the rest of the content and you get this nice transition of information that could flow up. For some modal windows um, instead of putting a, a, a pop-up you can literally just go from this piece of content and instead of it going full screen which is one of the worst modal patterns that you can get um, you can just go to a new page so you can literally just jump to a new page okay. so if you are going to have a modal and it is going to come over the content area here then let's have some good practices so one of those good practices is being able to have a close um, thing and it's really easy to close and when I say easy to close it's not just the close button if somebody clicks in this general area all around here then the modal window closes if somebody hits the escape key then it closes um, and then also it should probably say close yeah, it's very good for usability and good for screen readers to have things like that then uh, make sure that if you have a modal it's purely for something where there's a single action which is a confirmation message or something and a single thing there that's it what you don't want to do is have modal windows that have got stickers inside where you keep sliding through various content or have modal windows that then have a audience in here The other thing is to keep whatever you put in there really short. Okay, you don't want to scroll inside the modal window. That's definitely not. That's a no-no. You just want to have short little messages. It's just an explanation, call to action. And then make sure that this is really accessible so that people with disabilities um, are able to um, be aware that this is now a modal window and that there is a way uh, for them to action the next step somehow like the closed text or the call to action here but that's it keep it really really simple here's a few things that you must 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 stop doing so you can't have multiple modals i think some people might call it basically modal inception you don't want that modal on top of modal on top of modal okay then you certainly don't want modals that go over the entire screen like that you might as well just go to a new page or shift the page as I described earlier by going and shifting the content up like that. So there's really no reason for that. Then never do multi-step modals where stuff is changing within the modal. You don't want to just force these modals up. Modals must be something that somebody actively does something and then a modal window comes up and you must be able to close it and move on. I think that the last thing is, you know, you don't want to put adverts 
in modals. I, there's one pet tip that I have, it's getting to a website and the first thing is this big offer gets in the way and I'm gonna get rid of that offer to be able to get into the, uh, the, the page that I'm trying to get at. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, these modals are kind of taking you away from the basic pattern of working in a specific window, be it the browser, be it an app, you know, you, you, these take away from the fact that you really are interacting with this space, not creating a new space within the window. So it's, it's a window within the window and uh, that's a bad practice. So yeah, there's a few tips, just use modals sparingly. Great, so I hope you liked um, my little talk about modals and uh, that would be item number one on Craig's list, I guess. Um, don't take me too seriously. Um, you know, I'm just giving an opinion uh, based on my experience. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool.